Welcome to Engineering Simple. Today I'll be talking about auto transform and winder resistance. This is an important concept in the sense that auto transformers are a little bit different than regular two winding transformers. I would recommend watching previous videos that I made on auto transformers. An auto transformer has a winding called series winding which is connected in series with a second winding called common winding. Common winding is common to the high voltage and low voltage windings. So auto transformers are connected grounded wire, grounded wire. So for instance, if we just focus on just one phase, so from H1 to the neutral, so from H1 to where the terminal X1 is connected, that's the series winding. Let me just get a, a different highlighter. Then from where X1 terminal is connected to the neutral is called the common winding. So X1 to the neutral, that's the low voltage. So the common winding happened to be the low voltage winding. But the high voltage is from H1 all the way to the neutral. That means the high voltage winding has the series winding plus the common winding. And as I stated in previous videos, the auto transformer or auto transformers, the windings are both electrically, that means electrically connected and magnetically connected. So physically there is a, a connection between the high voltage and low voltage which is not true for typical two winding transformers, which they are only magnetically connected. So when you induce voltage in one, wi one winding, it basically, it causes flux to flow in the core, which induces voltage in the second winding. So these, these, these are typical transformers. So only magnetically connected, but for auto transformers, they are both electrically and, and magnetically connected. So some, uh, sometimes you are looking at a test report and it could be a test report from 1970s or 1980, you know, and and even the company probably the company that made that transformer is no longer in business you know probably bought by another company and you might reach out to that company who bought the manufacturer of the transformer you you are looking for test data and they might say sorry we don't have any information on that transformer but you might happen happen to have like a hard copy or you have some sort of test data in hand. So you're trying to extract the information you need. So you might, the resistance information might be face to face. That means terminal to terminal. It could be from the high voltage terminal to the low voltage terminal. That means just for the series winding or common winding, it could be just a common winding, which means from the low voltage terminal to the neutral. And you try to understand the resistances, what they mean, so that you can correctly and put them in your design or analysis, whatever you're trying to do. For instance, you need these resistances for conducting uh, GIC or geomagnetically induced current, which in which case you need the per phase uh, resistance in ohms, in the, which means for an auto transformer, you need the resistance of the series winding and the resistance of the common winding. But the test report might show, which means, so for the series winding, you need the resistance from H1 to X1 terminal. And for the common winding, you need the resistance from X1 to the HO, XO, or to the neutral, basically. But the test report might provide information, uh, resistance 
H1 all the way to H2, X1 to X2. So how do you, from that information, you calculate the resistance of the series winding and the resistance of the common winding to properly model the auto transformer? Because if you are off by a factor of, say, two, your, your, your analysis is not going to be accurate. It's going to be wrong. So it's important to input the correct information. Like uh, the famous saying says, all models are wrong. Some of, some of them are useful. And the reason being is if you don't input the correct information, the software you are, or the tool you are using, it will give you some results. So it's up to you to make sure that the input information is correct before you can get results and make sense out of it. So anyway, so if we take, let's assume you have the resistance from H1 to H2. So from H1 all the way to H2. So we see that H1 to H2, so all the, the windings are in series in this case. So we that that's equal to H1 to X1 terminal. That's what I have here. Then from X1 all the way to X2 terminal plus H2 to X2 or X2 to H2. So basically I just wrote wrote out the resistance from H1 to H2 and the order doesn't matter. So you can write them how, you know, X, H2, X2 or X2, H2. And let's assume H1, X1 resistance is equal to H2, X2. So basically this resist of the series resistance is the same, which typically for a three phase auto transformer, the resistances should be somewhat similar. They should be close, very close, because they, they are symmetrical, so they have to be very close within some very small margin of error because the transformer is made by machines and uh, workmanship. So there will be some error, but it's very, very small, very minimal. So for the sake of this exercise, let's assume these two. and are equal and in, and in practice you it's it's okay to assume that there's nothing wrong with assuming these two are equal so anyway if we re so based on this assumption and based on this equation here so i can rewrite the resistance of h1 to h2 is equal to x1 x2 plus 2 times h1 x1 so then if I want to calculate the resistance of H1, X1, so it's just rearrange the terms. So it's equal to a half of the resistance of H1, H2 minus the resistance of X1 to X2. The same thing, we know H, X1 to X2, it's two times the resistance of X1 to H O X O, which means the resistance of X1 to H O X O is just half of the resistance of X1 to X2. So that's what I wrote here. So here's a, an example. It's always helpful to have an example to understand the theory or what's going on. So let's assume we have a an auto transformer, say like a 560 MVA, top MVA to say like 345 to 138 KV. And, uh, and by the way, uh, as I stated in previous videos, all the transformers, typically the ratio is like one to two. So between the high voltage and low voltage. So Let's assume we measured, you know, during the testing, we measured the resistance from H1 
from H1 to H2 is 0.289 ohms. And from X1 to X2, we measured 0 0.0789 ohms. And the resistance from H2 to H3 is 0 0.298 ohms. And X2 to X3, 0 0.0815 ohms. And the resistance from H3 to H, H1, 0 0.285 ohms. And the resistance from X3 to X1, 0 0.0796 ohms. Like I said before, the resistances should be similar, but within a very small margin of tolerance. So it's not a big deal. So if I apply this equation here that I derived in the previous slide, then if I want to know, so I'm given the resistance from H1 to H2. What I'm trying to do is calculate the resistance from H1 to X1, basically this resistance here, because that's what I need to plug in in my calculation. Because I have a series winding and a common winding, and really that's what I need. I need the common winding, series winding. I don't care about the terminal to terminal resistance. So from H1 to X1, it's half of this uh, quantity here. Let me just get. So H1, H1, H2. So it's this resistance here. So that's why I'm plugging here. Minus the resistance of X1 to X2, which is this one here. So there's a value. So if I carry out the calculation, I get 0 0.10505 ohms. And that makes sense because this winding here is smaller than H1, H2, and therefore the number is smaller than this number here is smaller than this number. So that makes sense. Sometimes you you have to check, make sure the numbers make sense, you know. It's not just a matter of calculation because you want to make sure does the number I calculated make sense or not. If it doesn't make sense, you want to go back and check your calculation, see if uh, either the derivation was wrong or the calculation itself was wrong. So then if I want, so that's the series winding. If I want the common winding X1 to HO, XO, by the way, this circle here, these circles here, they just kind of signify bushings or terminals. So H1, H2, H3, X1, X2, X3, HO, XO, all those are bushings. This symbol here means it's grounded and just means the neutral since it's a, a Y connected winding. So the resistance from X1 to HO, XO is half of the resistance from X1 to X2. So, so basically it's half of this value here. So I get point 0.03945. So this value here is smaller than this. So that makes sense. So the math kind of checks out. So I do the same thing for, so I want to calculate, so I have, I want to calculate, so I calculated this resistance here and this resistance. Now I want to calculate from H2 to X, X2 and X2 to HO, XO. So again, I apply the same equation, then really it's just a matter of them doing the math. So I get point, 10825 ohms. I did the same thing to XO, HO, XO, and I carry out the math and I get point or 0 0.04075 ohms. So basically, I calculated this resistance and then this resistance here. 
So I do the same thing for the third phase. So basically the same calculation. So I'm going to use, so basically, H3 to to H1. So I'm going to use this path here, basically, and apply the equation that I derived before. So the resistance from H3 to X3 is equal to a half of H3 H1 minus it, the resistance of X3 to X1. So one half of H3 H1. So this value here. Oh, I'm sorry. Erase that. Sorry about that. So get get the highlighter back. There we go. Sorry about that. A so H three H one H three H one. So this val this is here. So I just plug the number minus the resistance of x3 to x1 this here and I plug this number here so if I carry out the calculation I get 0 0.1027 ohms so that's for the series winding for the common winding I just take half of this value here so if I carry out the math I get 0 0.0398 ohms so you can see from this exercise, the test report had terminal to terminal resistances, but really what I need is per phase or per winding resistance. That since I, I am since I have an auto transformer, I need series winding resistance and common winding resistance for each phase. So I, it's a three phase auto transformer so I need the series winding resistance the common winding resistance of each phase so using these equations I was able to calculate those values from the terminal to terminal resistances so it's auto transformers are not that complicated to understand but if you make a mistake if you treat an auto transformer like a typical two winding transformer then you are modeling or your calculation will be wrong so it's it's important to understand like what information you need from the test report and how to interpret it and how to make a conversion you know from a terminal to terminal to a per winding resistance so that that was it for this video. For more videos, uh, I would recommend going to Engineering Simple. Thank you and have a great time.